Lisa the First has a small cast of characters. The protagonist, Lisa, the antagonist, Marty, and a strange third character who seemingly has little to do with Lisa and Marty's conflict. During her explorations, Lisa finds this man not only as a fully embodied person, but also as a head sticking out of the ground, and her interactions with him are much more violent than any action she takes towards Marty. Given that the game takes place in her mind, everything Lisa encounters is her perception of something she's encountered in the real world. So who or what does this man represent? A clue may be in the man's identity. Named Tricky Rick by one of the game's collectible VHS tapes, Lisa can watch the tape and find Rick at the edge of a cliff. When she talks to him, he describes himself as a sensitive guy that likes caves and friction. And that's pretty much it. Not much to go on, just a compassionate spelunker that likes to touch things. So why would that cause Lisa to be so aggressive towards him? Well, the key indicator is in his name. His name, Rick, is assumingly short for Richard, which has a few other possible nicknames, one of which is Dick, which shares the moniker of a specific male body part, one that is sensitive and likes friction. Suddenly. Rick emerges as a phallic symbol, and the seemingly innocent spelunking he previously mentioned is much more vulgar, now standing as a euphemism for the act of sex. This isn't the only time Rick is associated with a sexual implication. There's a seemingly innocuous path that Lisa takes to one of the submerged heads that is curiously shaped, and even his own head resembles the glands of a penis. Tricky Rick is consistently associated with phallic imagery and is likely Lisa's internal representation of Marty's member. That could explain why she's so violent towards him. It's her acting out her hate for Marty, getting revenge the only way she knows how, by mutilating the source of his power, the source of her fear, and giving her the feeling that she is seizing back control of her life. Rick's dialogue at these moments, where he taunts her and derides her, could be how Lisa imagines Marty would react if she was ever to take these steps against him. Yet remember, the game takes place in Lisa's head, so when Rick is talking to Lisa, it could also be an internal voice of Lisa talking to herself. Rick could be indicative of the way Lisa feels about herself, a dirty harlot unworthy of sympathy or pity. Even though she's sickened by Marty, she's disgusted with herself even more, symbolized by the internal rebuking of herself by the most revolting thing she can think of. That changes the meaning behind the violence towards Rick. It isn't Lisa lashing out against Marty, it's Lisa lashing out against herself. The dialogue of the Rickheads all allude to the way they're killed. I will always cut through your mind, cut down with a razor blade. You have to swallow me, force-fed pills until an overdose. I will take your breath away, suffocated by a plastic bag placed over his head. Maybe these are ways Lisa mutilated herself. Maybe they were done in an effort to make Marty disinterested in her, to make him leave her alone. But when that failed, they could have been ways she attempted to take her own life in an effort to escape the torture she experienced on a daily basis, yet was never successful at it, until she was. Whether a phallic symbol of dominance or a symbol of Lisa's contempt towards herself, the seemingly innocuous Rick certainly carries some powerful implications. He tortured Lisa's mind, but once she killed him, she was finally able to take the steps she needed to start healing. It's just a shame that the story doesn't end with Lisa's catharsis. And that's it for Rick. I know it's a really short one, but I hope you enjoyed the time you spent watching the video. And if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to share them. I'd be happy to hear from you. But that's it. So thank you for watching and see you later.